Joining us today is Dr. Michelle Austin, Change and Adoption Manager for Calvary eHealth and Calvary Healthcare ACT. Michelle, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. First of all, are you able to give us a brief update on what to expect from implementing a personally controlled eHealth record system into an organization? Yeah, sure. Um, for, first of all, what to expect is a whole lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we were really pleasantly surprised at just how positive everyone we've spoken to have been about the concept. Uh, it's been really gratifying and it's making our working life really pleasant because uh, there's a lot of positivity around e-health. A lot of people uh, to, uh, are even going so far as to say, what, that doesn't exist already? Why not? Uh, so enthusiasm was the first thing that I would, I would say we should expect. Um, another thing though is scope creep um, or scope tsunami as we've been calling it simply because of the enthusiasm. A lot of people are wanting more and more capability built into the electronic health record which long term is a brilliant idea but short term uh, you really have to draw the line in the sand because you know you need to time to do things properly and to make sure that you've got one thing better down before you move on to the next and so uh, I think in terms of implementing uh, an electronic health record system into any organisation that you have to be really careful about defining the scope of, of the project and its, its parameters across time to, to make sure that things stay under control. Uh, another thing I guess I, I would say is that in terms of what to expect is that there is a bit of fear from, from some people uh, and it's usually based on a lack of understanding and this is a new system for Australia and uh, people are often fearful of the unknown and there's a, a lack of understanding of how it will work and, and people make assumptions which might not be correct. So uh, that's been one of our challenges is to overcome that fear so that we can uh, help people to come more solidly on board. It's certainly not stopping anyone but in some cases it might be slowing some people down in terms of really embracing e-health. Uh, and I guess my final comment on, on what to expect would be that the legacy systems that we're working with, it will vary from organisation to organisation, but in terms of the ones that we've been connecting with personally, um, the legacy systems can't do much. A lot of them are paper-based and therefore it's impossible for them to share electronic data in any way. So um, we need to be patient, we need to identify the system requirements and we need to map the current state to the future state and then work out the steps to go from current to future because in some instances that's really easy. Uh, I know some of the other sites that are involved in the, the National PCEHR project are working with, um, for example, hospitals that have electronic medical records. Uh, Calvary Hospital doesn't have that yet. So when you have a legacy system that isn't um, very technologically advanced, then uh, they, it can really slow you down. It can really um, require a lot of change management and a lot of communication. How do you ensure the effective communication and engagement between clinicians and other stakeholders during the process? That's, uh, it's not as hard as it might sound. Um, from our perspective, we identified our key stakeholders very early and we involved them in our planning stages. We allowed for a lot of input from them. We uh, gave them draft copies of everything we were working on and uh, got a lot of input from, from uh, representatives from all of the key stakeholder groups, of which there are many. And uh, we also leveraged off clinical champions. So we found the, the clinical champions who were already active in e-health or very technologically uh, savvy or interested and we leveraged off those people. We, we utilised their reputation or we got them to test things for us uh, and that has helped uh, create a lot of our engagement. Uh, we've also provided very targeted materials. We have very specific materials for consumers, so um, patients, healthy or, or um, active patients uh, to sign up, there's, there's really specific material for them and very specific material targeted at the clinicians. So that we're speaking to people in their own language, we're speaking to them about concepts that are meaningful to them and not in a generic sense. And I think the targeted materials really um, enhance our engagement with the, the different groups that we're working with. We've also used multiple communication channels. We've, we've tapped into every possible communication method. We haven't tried carrier pigeon yet, but uh, apart from that, you know, every possible communication method that we can possibly come up with, uh, we're trying that. We're getting the message out in a real variety of ways, and I think that's important uh, in terms of effective communication because not everyone likes to communicate in the same way. 
We've also made sure that our activities are very carefully planned. Uh, we're considering the busyness of the healthcare professionals. I mean, uh, healthcare professionals don't have a lot of spare time. They don't have a lot of time to investigate new systems or to invest in um, positive change. Even though they want to make that investment, they're very time poor uh, because they're in such demand. And so we're taking that into consideration and we're trying to make everything that we do when we connect with the clinicians and the stakeholders to be very efficient, very succinct, very time uh, aware and very timely uh, and to try and not um, not repeat our message if we don't have to because we don't want to waste any of their precious time. We've also tested our concepts with some of our target groups and uh, Healthcare Consumer Association to make sure that we are getting the message itself correct, not just the delivery mechanism. We've invited some of our key stakeholders onto our project board to, uh, to have their input in an ongoing governance sense. Uh, we've, do, we've cast our net very widely in terms of which stakeholders we have involved and at what level. And we've engaged good people. You know, we've got a really good team working on this project and it, um, it really helps to overcome some of the challenges, uh, you know, with multiple stakeholders with varying degrees of influence and varying levels of engagement. Um, having good people working on our project from a Calvary perspective is, has been absolutely uh, vital to our, to our project to make sure that we're connecting with everyone in the best way possible. What are the key benefits that your staff and patients will see as a result of the successful implementation of a PCEHR system? The sharing of information that previously hasn't been shared is the hugest benefit. Uh, and this results in better communication amongst healthcare providers for each patient. So at the moment, uh, for most patients, they, uh, especially for patients with chronic diseases or, or those in aged care or palliative care, which is something that Calvary eHealth is focusing on, when these patients go to see one of their healthcare providers, that healthcare provider, that doctor or specialist or nutritionist or whoever it is, keeps their own records. And unless they deliberately write a letter and fax or mail it or hand it to the patient to get to another healthcare provider, there's no communication at all between the various providers in, in the healthcare journey for each patient. So uh, one of the absolute key, most um, upfront benefits about eHealth is that the information that is, is created by these healthcare professionals is saved into a repository where each of the other healthcare professionals can, can view that information so that it's, it's there, it's to hand, it's uh, quality information at the right time, at the time of treatment, at the time when it's needed uh, and it's, uh, provide, as soon as it's saved it's, it's available in the repository so it's a very quick and efficient way to share data. And this speeding up, this timeliness and this speeding up of this communication can only result in better healthcare for patients because when the patient's healthcare provider needs information, it's already there to hand. It's fast, it's, qual it's a quality data, it's always kept up to date because it's taken directly from the GP desktop software, for example. Uh, it's very secure and it's available immediately. I mean, some other benefits are that uh, at the moment Calvary Hospital doesn't send electronic discharge summaries out to GPs, we send faxed ones and there are varying degrees of, of legibility of these faxes, uh, mostly because of the receiving end fax machine, uh, the standards, the quality of those machines vary and sometimes the discharge summaries are not sent as quickly as they could be or the copy that comes out is not as readable as it should be and the electronic discharge summary is, uh, is legible, it's instant, uh, it's very secure and it's more secure in fact than faxing. Uh, so that's a big, big advantage to the GP because they have discharge summary information about their patients immediately uh, and we have heard examples uh, previously of, of GPs who didn't know that their patients were in hospital. And, and to, the same, to the same end too, we'll be able to send electronic admission reports so the GP knows that the patient has actually been admitted in the first place. If they're, if they're here for a lengthy stay, uh, the GP may not be involved in their care while they're in the hospital and this way they'll have notification. Another huge benefit is about improved efficiency to, for clinicians. Uh, a great deal of time, some statistics report up to 25% of practice time is spent seeking or providing patient information. And electronic data available immediately through the, 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 
the software in the practice uh, means that this seeking and providing of information should be cut radically. Uh, we're, all, we're also anticipating a reduced duplication of tests or procedures uh, because the data will be to hand. There's no need to repeat a test when the data is available. That's much better for the patient because they don't have to have invasive tests repeated and better for the practice because it saves them time and money. Uh, we're also um, working on electronic referrals into Calvary so that uh, GPs can uh, send an electronic referral into our Calvary specialists uh, then the GPs will be able to receive a notification that that referral has been received. Previously with a faxed or mailed referral uh, there was no automated response and an automated response uh, is simply a quicker one and it means that the GPs are getting more information than they had before. For the patients there is uh, some real benefits, uh, especially on improved patient safety. The, uh, the national um, PCEHR will allow for emergency access to data so that uh, any healthcare practice who's participating and has enrolled in the PCEHR can have emergency access to, any, to the data for any patient who's also enrolled. Uh, that means if a patient is unconscious or unable to communicate that the practice could um, retrieve information about that patient such as allergies or adverse drug events uh, which could result in a, uh, potentially a decrease in morbidity or mortality because of uh, relevant information being available at the time of treatment, particularly when the patient themselves, provided they're able to be identified accurately, uh, if they're not in a, a position to be able to give that information themselves, uh, the information is there anyway. Uh, so we believe that there'll be a reduction in preventable adverse events such as um, wrong drugs being given or uh, drugs being given to people who are allergic to them. Um, there will also definitely be improved handover for patients from one facility to another so that if the information is available electronically we don't have to rely on paper copies going with a patient or word of mouth and all of this results in improved continuity of care. There's, uh, there's huge, huge benefits to the patient in the practitioners being able to share the data. Uh, having more timely and accurate patient clinical data at the point of care can only improve the patient experience through their healthcare journey. Um, finally on the patients, uh, improved patient empowerment will, will be a result of electronic health records being shared because patients will be more actively involved in their healthcare. They'll be able to contribute information. They won't have to rely on their memory to know which medications they take or when they last had a test. Uh, and because it's personally controlled, the patients can choose who has access to their online record. So, uh, you know, we're looking at enhanced privacy and security of information, more uh, timely information, and patients being an active participant in their own healthcare, which is, is definitely of benefit to the patient. Michelle, you're speaking at IIR's Preparing for PCEHR conference that's taking place on the 19th of March in Melbourne. What would you like delegates to gain from your presentation? Definitely an appreciation for the benefits and the challenges of implementing e-health. It's a tremendously rewarding journey, uh, not without its challenges, but it's, it's certainly exciting and it's the way of the future. And I, I, would really, I would really hope that delegates would get an appreciation for uh, the, the benefits and the challenges that they would be facing. Uh, I'd also like to, to give them an overview of the Calvary eHealth project and also how it relates to the national PCEHR because uh, it will roll up into the national program later on this year. Uh, I'd like the delegates to gain some insight into the complexity of, of eHealth. There's a lot of facets to eHealth and uh, it's a very complex um, environment and uh, you know, if people can gain some understanding of how it all fits together, I think that's a real bonus. You know, technology, it's, uh, it's an integral part of our everyday lives. We use technology for uh, banking, shopping and communicating, but our health records um, and our communications around our health are mostly on paper or in person. Um, we, at Calvary Health, we feel that it's time that there's a, this evolution in healthcare occurs so that we join the rest of the world and we use technology on an ongoing day-to-day -day way to enhance healthcare and make our healthcare journey just as efficient as our finance, you know, our banking journey, as our online shopping, as our emailing our friends. Um, this is something that's become a big part of everyone's lives except in health. And we really, uh, we really strongly feel that Calvary eHealth is just one way that this evolution in healthcare can take place. So that's a message that I'd like to put forward to the delegates. Dr. Michelle Austin, thanks very much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in Melbourne. I'm looking forward to it too.